Yeah, Emma, Emma Claire Foley joined Global Zero, its team uh, at New America in 2018. She now serves as Senior Associate for Policy and Research. Uh, she uh, works for uh, on research relating to nuclear proliferation, risk reduction, uh, and disarmament advocacy efforts. She monitors domestic and international policy developments. Emma Claire received her master's degree from Harvard University's Davis Center for Russian and Eurasian Studies and her bachelor degree uh, in Russian, uh, Eastern European, and Eurasian Studies and History from the University of Michigan. And I think she's also giving us a, a lesson here uh, in commitment and steadfastness as she's joining us well past midnight uh, in Europe. Uh, Emma, the floor is yours. Thanks very much. Um, so I think uh, our other panelists have really covered well um, a pretty expansive critique of the idea of deterrence as it appears in different ways uh, in discourse around nuclear weapons. And I'm going to add just a couple tiny thoughts to that and then um, take more of the approach of the case study about how this language is applied today um, to one of the nuclear weapons programs that's sort of on the on the top of everyone's mind, the Sentinel program, uh, which just yesterday was recertified after uh, revelations that it had gone dramatically over budget. So I'll talk about that. Um, but the first thing that I want to point out as I'm doing this is that um, we're uh, when we talk about deterrence theory, this this idea is really baggy, right? That it's not necessarily a theory in the sense, um, at least in the sense that it's used, that has, you know, a clear articulation um, that can then be applied in, in the way that we might think of um, the word theory implying. What it really seems to mean is anything that someone in power who uses it wants it to mean, right? Uh, as we hear it over and over and over as a justification and arguments about nuclear weapons, um, it comes to carry more and more weight and more and more meaning until it becomes effectively meaningless, right? And so kind of what I want to just what I want to demonstrate with my short talk here is how that works and how, you know, one of these actual programs, you know, really fails to serve any aspect of what this word might mean. Um, so to talk about the Sentinel program, um, this is a program that would uh, modernize, as we call it, but effectively what that means is replace uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles, the land-based nuclear missiles that are kept in underground silos in five states uh, in the Great Plains. Um, they've been there since the early 60s. Uh, and were initially placed there because of their ability to um, be shot over the North Pole right into the Soviet Union. Um, and they've had a really tremendous effect on the development of the states in which they're based. And I'll talk about that a little bit when I talk about the effects of the program. So they've been there for a long time. Um, there's been a multi-year effort to modernize them as part of this comprehensive effort of so-called, again, modernization of the nuclear uh, weapon, the U.S. nuclear weapons arsenal, something that's happening across the globe. Um, and uh, at the time when this came up as a, uh, as a project, right, as a potential initiative, it was criticized by many of us here um, and many others as unnecessary and excessively expensive, right? And I want to linger on the unnecessary side rather than in the excessively expensive side, although that's certainly true, um, to kind of tie this into arguments that have been made tonight. Um, we have land-based nuclear missiles that are kept in silos. That means their location is static and known, right? And so um, if we think of them as a... a you know, a force that can be used by the United States, they're also a potential target, right? And they're a pretty good target as targets go uh, in that their location is publicly known. It is on Wikipedia, their precise coordinates, right? And you can visit these silos if you want, as I have. Um, and so uh, what we have here, right, and this has been covered in broad strokes by other uh, speakers, but is a situation of profound vulnerability, right? a situation where um, a president uh, whose 
in theory, making a decision about whether to use these tremendously powerful weapons has only a few minutes, right, to decide uh, whether, in fact, to launch a strike um, with the information that they might have that a, a strike is coming in, right? So, so what this causes is uh, a tremendous risk of a um, accidental first strike. Uh, and once you launch an ICBM attack, um, they cannot be recalled, which means that the um, risks associated with maintaining this force are very high. Um, numerous experts beyond this have argued uh, that any conceivable need uh, to be able to launch a nuclear strike uh, could be met with other uh, nuclear weapons. And yet, um, and, and this is a fact that, you know, you will you will see acknowledged pretty widely, right, within expert circles of all stripes. You know, certainly the, the experts so, uh, shown in the, uh, the cartoon we just saw, as well as um, something closer to, to what we have here today. And yet, you know, when you look at the um, press release that came out uh, just yesterday, yesterday all of your time and not, not mine, uh, about the recertification of the Sentinel program, it does reference deterrence and the necessity of these weapons to, as it says, field a credible and effective deterrent, right? So um, even among people for whom uh, deterrence has a has a precise and credible, I guess I'll use the word meaning, um, these weapons have been uh, shown to be uh, extraneous somewhat, and yet, of course, they're, lo they're lumped under this broad umbrella of deterrence um, because as I've mentioned, right, it's a it's an indicator of of power rather than any actual um, significance of of the or, or any actual future scenario that might be considered using these weapons. Um, so this is a you know a general sketch of the more um, how how you might talk about these in terms of nuclear weapons strategy. There's a whole other world to talk about with their effect on the lives of the people who live and work around them, right? The program was sold as a uniquely effective economic um, impetus to the area in which it's based, um, which has been as well comprehensively disproven, right? Um, not only has it been shown that uh, comparable um, investments in things like healthcare, education, green energy, all of which are desperately needed um, in these states, some of which are the, uh, which are among the least populous in the United States. Um, and suffer from huge uh, shortages of things like rural health care, elder care, um, educational facilities across the board, really. Uh, so, so investing in any of these things would be much more effective for the long-term economic prosperity and um, just, you know, ability of the citizens of these states to thrive. Uh, and and the funny thing is when you look at when you when you talk to people in these states as I have um, there's an intense awareness of this right and um, many cities and 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 states have already begun to effectively plan for a disruption in the funding that does bring some economic impact uh, when we talk about uh, in replacing this force which has been based there um, and around which uh, min major cities, and uh, Air Force bases in this area have, have grown and expanded. Um, so we have essentially an argument that's made, right, for a program that is now 81% over its originally proposed budget. And as I said, right, um, talking about the cost impact of a program like this is not necessarily the most important thing, but it is certainly important to mention at a time when, um, you know, basic human needs are comprehensively defunded, right, with the justification being a, a lack of funding, right, there seems to be an, an endless well of um, money to support uh, programs like this. Uh, but, you know, on any other level, it's shown to be um, inadequate to serve any purpose it's been designated for, and yet it continues to persist, persist under this label of deterrence, right, this great sort of circus tent covering up um, the actual situation. Um, so I think I will wind down my remarks there. I wanted to add just like one uh, focused uh, example of how this word is used today. Um, 
And uh, yes, looking forward to people's questions. Thank you.